Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker, and uh, I'm very excited about this uh, This special. This is not a Tuesday tangent, because we already did a Tuesday episode. This is a special Tuesday tangent on a Thursday. So I just wanted to give everybody an update, uh, some more information on Joseph Smith photo and some channel update stuff. There's some fantastic things happening that I want to share with the audience. First of all, I just wanted to say that I've been getting tremendous responses and feedback from people who watched my interview with Curtis Weber. And of course, folks, it was about the Joseph Smith photograph here. And this is actually, uh, Curtis sent me, this is a cleaned up version of the uh, photograph. And uh, it's really amazing. So you really you can get a real glimpse of the Joseph Smith's eyes here, which is pretty powerful. So I had Anthony put this on as my background, just to kind of, it's pretty cool, isn't it? I don't know, it's pretty awesome. But I just want to say, we've been getting really, really good responses from people, uh, overwhelmingly positive, like I said, uh, there are people who do have questions about it. There are some people who think that it's actually a picture of Hiram. Other people have given uh, their views that other uh, photos are actually of Joseph. I've been getting emails from a ton of you. I've been hearing from a lot of you. And I am truly interested in hearing all the different voices of the restoration. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Curtis come back on the program. And we're going to do a Q&A with some of the more common questions that people are asking him. So I want you actually in the description to also maybe uh, come up some with some questions for, with Curtis, for Curtis. Uh, that you would like to have answered about the Joseph Smith photograph. So I think that would be really, really cool. So like I said, we're going to do a Q&A. Don't have it scheduled yet. He might be going on vacation, so it might be after vacation. We're still working on that. By the way, he did tell me that he he did tape, tape something with Saints Unscripted about it too. So watch for that. That's very interesting. Um, I also want to say I've been getting a wonderful, wonderful feedback from people about the, uh, the, the recent interview I did with the panel that Robin Jensen helped put together with the Joseph Smith Papers Project. And again, folks, this is what it's all about. We are gonna to talk to some of the top scholars in Mormonism and, and the, within the, of course, the Latter-day Saint tradition, as we could also call it. And we're gonna have, we're gonna to continue to have these panels. And we're gonna have some of the top minds come on the program and give us the latest scholarship, cutting edge stuff. And people are gonna be, you, this, is, this channel is going to be the place to go to get the latest in Mormon scholarship I'm very excited to be so connected to people at the Mormon History Association at the Church Historian's Office. I had professors at BYU come to me and say that they really, really enjoy the channel uh, when I was at Mormon History Association. Had no idea the extent of people within the Mormon scholar. I mean, I know that there are quite a few that do, but I had no, no idea that many that I never hear from don't even know who they are. They're watching the program. So I want to give a shout out to all the church employees all the CES instructors, CES instructors, all the BYU professors, all the people who work in the church office building. Uh, I want to thank all of you for uh, your feedback and people who work in the media department. Almost every I hear from almost all the different departments within the, the church now. I've got a good relationship here, and I want to keep it going because I think that's really important that this is the Switzerland of Mormonism, that all voices are heard and they're treated fairly. And I think that's why people uh, really are enjoying this program. By the way... I just wanted to let you know that we just recently passed the 5,000 subscribers. Uh, that, to me, is an important milestone that we reached. And, of course, two weeks before that, we reached a half million views for the channel. So now we're at 5,000 subscribers, a half million views. The next big milestone, in my mind, is 10,000 subscribers and a million views. And I really think that within the year, we can attain both those as well. And this is very exciting because we really are one of the fastest Mormon podcasts in the entire industry. And it just comes, keeps on growing and growing and growing. And uh, I just wanted uh, to let you know that I've got a lot of cool things lined up with signature books, with Greg Cofford books. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have the authors. I had Nick Lekturski and uh, and uh, Nick Lekturski. Oh, I'll remember your name in a second here. Um, and we're going to have the authors of the book uh, Method Infinite. And so we're very excited about doing that. And they're good because they're coming up with a very, very, very special volume of infinite, infinite uh, method infinite. OK, there's only going to be 100 copies made of this book. So they're going to be coming on my program to discuss that. So I'm very excited about that and uh and again i wanted to say too that just got tremendous feedback from everybody at mormon history association and i've got her i mean the the, the list of names of people that have agreed to come on my program are going to blow you away 
So I also wanted to let you know that uh, I'm going to be doing a special thing with Rebecca Biblioteca's Good Book Club, and we're going to be doing um, Chris Thomas's book uh, about the John Bonet Ramsey uh, unexpected book, unexpected about the not John Bonet, you know, um, not John Bonet, Elizabeth Smart. I'm so sorry, I always get those mixed up. We're going to have a, a book drawing. We're going to have a book club meeting. I believe it's on Tuesday, July 11th. And we're also going to do the book drawing for his book then as well. So we're very excited about that. I know these are tangents, folks. Remember, these are Tuesday tangents or on a Thursday. So I'm going to mess up now and then. Um, one of the things I also wanted to mention is uh, we taped an interview with the gentleman who has the YouTube channel called Grandpa Reads the Comics. Uh, turns out he's a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And his son reached out to me. Uh, as a friend made a friend request and I just happened to see them holding the silver plaque for a hundred thousand subscribers. And I was like, I know who that is. I heard about grandpa reads the comics and how he went from a couple hundred subscribers in April to now he's close to half a million subscribers. He's probably already reached a half million subscribers just in a few months. So we did this wonderful, wonderful interview with him. So let's see here. I got to make sure I get everything covered here. Oh, so I am planning, hopefully, all right, hopefully, to uh, be attending uh, the uh, Sunstone Conference at the end of July. Uh, I still haven't heard if I'm going to be the umpire for the uh, kickball tournament, Lindsay. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it or not. Uh, but if you want me to be the umpire for the kickball tournament between the fundamentalists and the Exmos, let me know because it was a success last year. And then also I am going to be presenting at the John Whitmer Historical Association this September in Texas, not too far from Austin, Texas, they've been asked to, I've been asked to give a presentation there, along with a couple other prominent uh, podcasters who I will reveal at some point as well. And then this is what I want to lead to. So basically, uh, for the, there was that, I, I recently I had John Perry on my program who does the, the intelligent, the, the, the evolution, biological evolution channels stated casually and stated clearly. And uh, he recently posted on his, one of his channels, a, uh, a, a brief segment that he, a clip that he took from my episode, and that's actually kind of gone viral. It has to do with intelligent design now uh, and, and creationism, and I also gives my take on it because he wanted to hear what my thoughts were on it because, of course, many of you know, for like 12 years, I was an atheist, and I studied biological evolution, and I got to know and understand it very well. And I do feel like it's important that people kind of get the proper context and understanding of what the, the theory of evolution actually tells us and not what other people say it is, but actually uh, get the correct information. And so this, I, I am critical of the intelligent design movement. Um, and I, personally, I have been. I haven't gotten into it too much on my program. But uh, John was a great guest to have on the program to talk about that. And I'm planning on having him back on to also do a q a uh, as well uh about people's questions about evolution because we ran out of time on our last interview so folks here it is here is the thing that he taped for his channel i want you to check it out and watch it i think you'll find it very interesting and i just want to thank everybody for everything you've done those of you who'd like to financially support us don't forget we have links in the description don't forget about the merch store mormonbookreviews.com as well now sit back and enjoy our segment that John Perry made that features myself and him engaging each other. Y'all have yourself a great day. Recently, the Discovery Institute, you know what I'm talking about, the intelligent design people. They're the ones who try to get creationism taught in schools. It went to court. There was a big trial. Even after their huge failed court case, those guys are still around, and I feel like it's still a pretty large organization, probably still a multi-million dollar organization. And recently, they have aimed their slander machine at yours truly. They follow my social media, they write articles about my tweets, they make videos about me. I'm going to talk about that here more in a second, but first, wow. I just realized the last time I posted here was before my trip to Ecuador in December. What I've been doing is I've been focusing all my energy on Stated Clearly. I've been doing animations. Definitely go check those out if you haven't seen them yet. I did one on Bee Stingers. I did one on Single Cell Bottlenecks. And I even did kind of a Stated Casually style video about chat GPT over there, where I just asked it a bunch of questions about evolution. It was really fun. I'm still alive. I survived in Ecuador. I need to put together a video for you about that trip. It was amazing. To see blue and gold macaws in their natural habitat 
I wasn't expecting that to be the thing that really surprised me, but man, that took my breath away. And we did see river dolphins. This here is stock footage. The footage that we got on our cameras, it tended to be at dusk when they would come up close to us. And so the, none of the footage was all that great, but we will be doing it again next December. EvoTour.info is the website where you can go sign up for the newsletter about that. If you sign up for the newsletter, you'll be alerted as soon as ticket sales are open. We're only selling 12 spots. So anyway, back to the intelligent design stuff. The Discovery Institute. Recently, I had a viewer ask me to respond to all of the material they've been making about me. I looked into the things they were writing. Honestly, it just kind of looked like garbage. Really petty stuff. To me, it doesn't even warrant a response. But I, of course, am biased. Maybe there are some really legitimate criticisms that they're throwing my way. And so what I did is I went and I asked a pro-science evangelical Christian what he thought. Stephen Pinecker is an evangelical Christian who runs a podcast about Mormonism. His podcast, among other things, it helps Mormons understand how their religion differs from mainstream evangelical Christianity. On that podcast, he likes to talk to current and ex-Mormons. And because I was actually raised in the Mormon religion, I used to be a Mormon, he had scheduled me to come on. During that interview, I asked him, as an evangelical Christian, what do you think about the materials the Discovery Institute is making about my science animations? The following is a clip showing his response. If you enjoy this clip, check out the entire thing. There's a link down in the video description. Without further ado, here is a pro-science evangelical Christian responding to the Discovery Institute's attacks on my work. And it was so funny because, you know, I watched you asked me to watch the video, so I watched your video, and then I watched their video. One thing is that it's classic quote mining is what mm -hmm. is a creationist a tactic that they'll they'll take one sentence or one word, and 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 just go off go off on it yeah. and make that their whole thing. And rather than address the main aspects of whether it's whether it's an article or a, a presentation like you do, they're just going to focus on one or two things that they can say, aha. And then that yeah. ninety percent of their video is spent talking about that. That's what that's a that's what creationists do all the time. It's a it's a tactic to make right. it seem like they're engaging, but they're really not. They're just they're they're being diversion diver, yeah. diversionary. Yeah. Anytime there's something that really takes hold in the community that 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 becomes convincing for a lot of people, and in, in science, any dis big discovery that, that people are excited about in science, the creationist kind of machine likes to use those keywords and produce lots of articles and lots of videos and so on. It's kind of like a, an attempt to censor the internet, I suppose. The Discovery Institute has a, has a separate company called Evolution News, where they write articles about anything that comes out in evolution and they just say that it's false. This is the tactic that they're using. They're, they're trying to just put out a ton of stuff. It's not a surprise they did that to me because I'm making videos that are used in classrooms. So. And that's the key thing is that that, that would yeah. make you a, a, a direct threat to the, what they're trying to do. So I, I made a video called What is the RNA World Hypothesis? And again, so this was, this was funded by the, the Center for Chemical Evolution, Nicholas Hudd. When he and I first set out to do a series of animations about the origin of life, one of the things that we were trying to fight against, the public really does have a, an, this idea that the origin of life is already figured out. That actually is a, a legitimate problem. When I go to schools, I'll ask students before we watch a video, have scientists figured out the origin of life? And probably like 25% of the class will say yes. After they watch the video, I'll ask again, and maybe like one person will say yes. You know, So I'm like, okay, our videos are working. We're, what, what we're trying to do is, is show people this is not figured out. There's a lot of progress happening. And Nick's like, I want to get those high schoolers excited so they come and end up working for me as a researcher. He's like, I, I and right now, when people think this is already solved, they're not excited to go into origin of life research. Why would you go, why would you get excited to research something that's already been figured out? So there, there's some pretty strong alignment with my concern, Nicholas Hudd's concern, and the Discovery Institute's concern about origin of life stuff is we, we all agree. It's a problem that people think this has already been solved. And a lot of that is due to bad journalism and so on. So the RNA world hypothesis video, there are four times in that video where I stop and I point out, this is not fully worked out. I'm, I'm showing people what the R or RNA world hypothesis is in general. I say it's a hypothesis, which means by default that it's not figured out. I, I never say that it's a fact that this is how we know that the original life happened. At the very end, I talk about different avenues that are also being studied because 
we don't know if this is this is it. I also have a video about the metabolism first hypothesis. And in that, I do a lot more attacking of the RNA world hypothesis because we're talking about why a different hypothesis is 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 so important here. So I, I do find it interesting that they're accusing me of telling people that this is already figured out because that's exactly not what we're doing. In fact, when I show this video in classes, I do the before and after specific question about this topic. And it's only the kid who wasn't paying attention that will say, raise his hand and say, yeah, scientists already figured this out. There, There's this belief that there is this war going on and it's kind of like yeah. a spiritual war and that you, people like you are a direct existential threat to Christianity, American evangelical Christianity in particular, and that yeah. you're basically there to undermine and destroy the faith of people and 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 so by teaching evolution, you're 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 going against the Bible. You're going against you're 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 rebelling against God. And so in one sense, they 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 almost view you almost like a satanic person. And it must it must be weird for you to be on the receiving end of that. But that's what motivates their worldview. They yeah. really think that that's what's going on. And I used to, in many ways, kind of growing up, that's what we, that's kind of early on as a young kid, that's kind of what we were taught very similarly. And so mm -hmm. when you're watching the Discovery Institute's uh, attack on you, they're not taking into account the nuance that you're using and that mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're making a point to say, this is, this is the best information we have at the time. This is the hypothesis. This is how it works. So you're describing the hypothesis and they're, they're taking is like, he's saying that this is what happened. And then see, now they're misrepresenting what you're trying to say. And so I think that we all need to be careful on both sides is that we don't come try to come across too firmly like knowing this is it for sure. Right. I think we all can use nuance. And I think yeah. the Discovery Institute, you need to also maybe recognize that you need to be a little bit more honest in the way that you're portraying John's videos because he's not saying this is it. And I, you know, yeah. this is what science has already figured out. No, this mm -hmm. is what science is exploring. This is what it's trying to understand. Whenever the Discovery Institute attacks a video, it just it gets more views and I earn more money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, and they're paying to advertise on your videos too. So you're they're helping fund your channel, yeah, ironically yeah. enough.